In just a moment, you'll hear James Stewart as the Six Shooter, just one of the many great stars brought to you Sundays on NBC. Every Sunday, hear Hume Cronin and Jessica Tandy in The Marriage, Sir Lawrence Olivier on Theater Royal, Lawrence Tibbet with the Golden Voices, Helen Hayes, Frederick March, Rex Harrison, and Lily Palmer on the NBC Star Playhouse. All of them heard only on NBC. James Stewart as the six shooter. Critical condition. He shows courtesy for other drivers. He knows that speed is his greatest enemy. And most important, he knows and obeys the laws. Remember, few accidents happen with safe drivers. Are you one of them? Now, Act One of The Six Shooter, starring James Stewart. I hadn't seen Mary and Dan for pretty near three years, not since they left the panhandle. So I figured as long as I was riding up through the Platte River country, I might as well swing out of my way a piece and look in on them. Now, we'd been real good friends for a long time. It was kind of like going home. And the closer I got, the more I kept thinking back, remembering, kind of daydreaming. You know, riding across prairie flat sort of does that to you. Your horse, he kind of finds his own trail mostly, and you just slouch easy-like in the saddle and listen to the hoof beats, steady, regular, Things you haven't thought about for years sneak into your head. Anyhow, I, I still had a day to go, and I, I was watching out for a good spot to bed down when I saw this campfire up ahead. Well, the way I figure, human beings are always better company than coyotes, so I gave Scar a flick with the reins and headed up toward it. Whoa, oh, easy now, boy. There we well. Easy. Wow. Well, Howdy. Hiya. Uh, you, uh, you'd rather camp private? Well, climb down. Pour yourself some java. Well, thanks. Easy, boy. Hey, whiz, that smells good. Yeah. You, uh, any notion about how far this Walnut Creek? Mm, 20 miles or so, I reckon. That where you're going? Yeah, yeah, I stopped over there. A couple of friends there I haven't seen in quite a while. Uh-huh. Yeah, a fellow there I ain't seen for a while, neither. That's all. Uh, hey, by George, there's good coffee. Yeah, I've been hunting him for over three years. Finally located him. I'm going to kill him. Uh, uh-huh. Uh, how come? I murdered my kid brother four years ago in Laredo. I shot him down in the street. Yeah. Well, another killing won't bring him back. Uh, nothing will bring him back. After I killed Dan Mailer, nothing will bring him back, neither. Dan Mailer? That's right, Ponce. Huh? Yeah, I know who you was. As soon as you rode up to that fire and I got a look at that gun of yours. Britt Ponce. The fellow they call the six-shooter. Well, you must have known I was a friend of Dan's. How come you told me all this? Well, I figure you'll warn him. And that's fine with me. I want him to know. Have time to get scared, you know. Maybe try to run away. I like it if he runs a while first. I catch up with him. You tell him that, Ponce. You tell him Red Lawson's coming to kill him. And there ain't nothing he can do about it. Well, all right. Uh, thanks for the coffee. Easy, boy. Now, Lawson, I reckon Dan won't run. I'll be seeing you. Come on, boy. Come on. Trouble with the past. There wasn't only good things in it. it. Got some bad ones, too. And one of the bad ones was reaching out for Dan and Mary. I didn't know this fellow Lawson. I didn't know what he was talking about, but I did know Dan. And I knew if he killed somebody back there in Texas, it hadn't been murder. It was long about middle of forenoon when I rode up the dirt road between the rows of cottonwoods, turned into the yard. Old hound dog came charging around the side of the house, sounding a lot meaner than he looked. 
Cool, boy. Cool, Scar. Here now. Here now. Now quit it. Yeah, you don't want to bite anybody. Ah, uh, ah, nice fella. Uh, go on, tell him you got company. Go on, boy. Go on. Go on. The place had a good feel to it. Quiet, peaceful. And then I remembered Lawson. Oh, I just can't believe it. Hiya, Mary. Gee, it's been a long time, hasn't it? Oh, <laughs> Dan, come on up and see who's here. Hurry. He's been working in the barn fixing up one of the plows. How are you? Hey, you haven't changed a bit, Mary, unless you're a little prettier than Oh, you. oh you're oh, not. You're <laughs> Hi, Dan. Oh, good. Uh, oh, you stayed away too long. Well, things came up, Dan. You know how it is. Yeah, yeah. You, you're sure looking good, both of oh, you. Oh, feeling good, too. Settling down is what does it, Britt. Yeah, she took a good saddle man and turned him into a poor plow man. What do you think of that? That's not true, Dan. <laughs> We've got the best stand of corn west of the Omaha. What's really great, though, Britt, is peace. Peace? Uh-huh. No more gunfighting, the range wars. Never knowing whether Dan would come home sitting up in his saddle or tied onto it. That's all in the past now. Why, Dan doesn't even wear a gun anymore. And that's the way I want it, Britt. It's the kind of life I want from... Oh, have we got a surprise for you. Oh, well, you, you know, I... Kind of hard to surprise, you know, you remember? <laughs> that's what you think. Come on inside. Now, don't you tell him, Dan. Oh, no. Oh, you'll see, uh, Britt. Let's see. Let's see. What, could, could, one of those newfangled player pianos, is oh, that it? Oh, no. A piano. That's the most ridiculous guess I ever heard of. Well, it sure couldn't be anything that... that, that the... has... Hmm? Well, well, I'll be darned. Well, uh, well, well, I'll be... Well, I'll be dog. Gone. It's a baby. It's a baby. Well, which which kind is it, Mary? Not it. He. Hmm? That's oh. young Brit. He'll be a year and a half old next month. That name was Mary's idea, Brit. I sure wouldn't have wished it on him. Well, well, <laughs> well, I'll be doggone. Oh, he's all upset. Hasn't had his nap out. Brit, you'll have to look him over later. You and Dan go on outside now and let me quiet him down. Oh, sure, Mary. I can't have my namesake all upset. Are you hungry, Brit? Oh, you. I'm always hungry. You know that, Mary. Good. Got some buttermilk cornbread in the oven. Be ready in a minute. You know, Brit, Mary is right. This is a good life. I never thought I'd settle down and like it, but I sure have done it. Yeah. Yeah, Dan. I, I guess Mary can't hear us out here, can't she? No, she can't hear us. Why, what's the matter, Britt? I met a fellow on the trail last night, Dan. Name's Red Lawson. Lawson? Says you shot his brother in Laredo about four years ago. Lawson. Kurt Lawson. Yep. Yeah, I did, Britt. He was one of the Bracken gang, that bunch of rustlers that pulled an ambush on me when I was working for the Circle J Ranch. Well, I... I guess I better dig out the shooting irons and go after him. No, wait a minute, Dan. Wait nothing. He's probably holed up in town. The odds will be better if I go after him instead of waiting for him to come to me. Yeah, but what about Mary? Well, that's just it. If I catch him in town, it'll keep him from coming out here. And... What about her, Britt? What do you mean? Well, she's happy now, Dan. She figures this kind of thing is all over and done with. Well, she'll sure find out different if he comes out here gunning for me. Well, maybe he won't, though. Maybe, Dan, maybe I can do something. Britt, I've always fought my own battles. But you've got Mary now. You've got the baby. And you're a lot faster with a gun than I am. Is that what you're trying to say? No, no, Dan. I, there are just other answers besides killing, that's all. Or maybe we can find one anyway. We can try, can't we? I saddled up Scar a bit early the next morning and rode into town alone. Figured I'd have a talk with the sheriff. After all, this was his job when you come right down to it. Well, he wasn't in his office at the county jail. He was out of town for the next three days. So I walked down the main street trying to figure out what to do. I, this wasn't much of a town, Walnut Creek. is a couple of blocks of... Clabbered buildings, 
boardwalk along the front of them, sheet iron awnings up over, and nothing much stirring but the dogs. Sleepy, quiet, real nice and peaceful for everybody except me. Huh? Oh. Oh, Mary. Oh, go now. Oh. Well, you were certainly an early bird this morning. Well, Mary, does Dan know you came into town by yourself? Oh, I don't know, Britt. I come in alone every day or two. Why shouldn't I? Something wrong, Britt? No, no, no. I just wonder, that's all. Actually, I think he was too busy to notice I'd left. You know what he was doing? Cleaning his gun. You're a bad influence, Briff. Well, I... I think you've started him thinking about things... Well, with... Ponset, oh. how about it? You give him my message? What? Lawson. Mary, uh, I'll... I'll see you later, huh? Well, all right, Briff. Oh, now, there, there ain't no need of the lady. No. no like uh, goodbye, Mary. I'll see you later, huh? Well, all right, Briff. If you say so. Giddy up. Come on. Come on. Mary, huh? Dan's wife, maybe. I hear he's got a kid, too. Yeah, maybe you hear too much, Lawson. And talk too much, too. Maybe you don't ride enough. Oh, I'll ride. I'm through here. When I get even. Yeah, but Dan told me about that. Your brother tried to ambush him. He was in with the Bracken gang. That don't make no difference to me. He was my brother. Dan Mailer was in my place. He might feel the same way. Maybe I'll give him a chance to feel the same way. Now that I know he's got a wife... Kid. Now, Lawson, if you touch me, or yeah, yeah, I kid. know. I know a lot. But once I've done what I come here to do, I don't care what happens afterwards. You, Dan Mailer, can make no move until I do. You see how it stacks up, Ponce? I got all the cars. And he turned his back and he walked off down the street, and I stood there watching him go, knowing he was right. He did have all the cards. There was only one thing in the world he wanted. Revenge. And he didn't care what it cost to get it. Even his life. Dan and I couldn't move first. And afterwards, it'd be too late. We'll return to James Stewart as the six-shooter in just a moment. When it's entertainment you're after, you'll find the very best on this station of the NBC radio network. Thursday night, for example, you'll hear Robert Young, Roy Rogers, Ralph Edwards, and Eddie Cantor, each with a great program for your listening pleasure. Robert Young on Father Knows Best, a program based on the assumption that the man of the family can put one over on the wife and youngsters. And Truth or Consequences with Ralph Edwards. When Ralph sends a contestant off on a consequence... It usually ends up as one of radio's funniest stunts. And if you like Western songs and adventures, you'll find none better than the ones you hear on the Roy Rogers Show. Then, to top it all off, hear the little-known stories of show business that Eddie Cantor tells on Show Business Show each Thursday on the NBC Radio Network. Now...